Assalamu alaikum, good evening, thank you for tuning in to PTV World and welcome to Sports Extra with me, your host Sabeel Sachal Hazer. We have an exciting roundup of sports for you today, so without further ado, let's take a look at our lineup for the day. This evening we'll be discussing a variety of subjects, starting off with the Pakistan and Australia Test Match, the second test which is ongoing right now. I'm sure you are all following it, all following it as you are watching the show. Pakistan, are we talking about football? We, Last night, we had two games. We had Manchester United succumbing to Atletico Madrid 1-0 at Old Trafford and Benfica edging Ajax 1-0 at the Johan Cruyff Arena. So both home teams uh, in the second leg have been eliminated. United put up what can only be described as a toothless uh, fight against uh, Atletico Madrid, never really challenging or black, never really looking like they were in the game, uh, at least never making any clear-cut chances with a bulk of possession. And Atletico Madrid, um, Lodi on that wing, dominating. Again, he is such a terror for United and he, even in the first leg, was unlucky not to get uh, in more goal involvement. So obviously Atletico and them drew 1-1 in the first leg. But he got his goal here today and that was enough to beat United and Ronaldo failed to get a single shot on target. You have to feel for the multiple five-time Ballon d'Or winner. Apart from that, we also had Ajax, like I said, losing 1-0 thanks to a Nunes uh, goal. They lost to Benfica, 3-2 on aggregate. Another very fiery game with a lot of yellow cards and fouls, but exciting as well for, two, for a 1-0 game. It did have a lot of action. That is our second segment of the day. And for this evening's final segment, we will be discussing Tom Brady, the man who only a few Weeks ago, we brought you an incredible package. We discussed in detail his career when he announced his retirement, has announced that he is coming back. So six weeks away from the game and he just decided that, well, he needs to get back on the field. Uh, we all mentioned when he retired that it does seem like he has a lot left in the tank and perhaps he's just getting bored. We have no idea. We'll be discussing with our analysts who will be giving you uh, uh, their take on Tom Brady's uh, return. Obviously, it will be exciting to see him return to Tampa Bay for another, uh, for another season in the NFL. Always great to see the best in the world do what they do. So we are excited to have Brady back. But that's all we have in store for our show today. We'll be starting off, as mentioned, with the cricket. Now, in studios with me joining us for this segment, I am joined by Imran Janjua. You may know Imran Janjua if you've been a long-time viewer of the show. He is a, a sports analyst and a sports expert. Imran, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sabeel, for inviting. Always a pleasure to have you. And we have cricket commentator and cricket expert, our hot favorite on Twitter. We have K. Asif Ahmed. K. Asif, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Bhuvan. You're very welcome. Always a pleasure to have you. So let's get straight into it. Uh, people at home, you will be following the game while watching this show. So as we know, Pakistan, massive fight back in the second innings. Imran, what do you make of the second innings fight back, Babar Azam's performance, and what is the best course of action in these last few overs for Pakistan? Um, yeah, we need, to, we need to save this test um, um, uh, in the aftermath of what Babar, uh, Babar has done. He has shown, uh, we've been saying it uh, since the PSL when, when he was down with the form and the, his team was not performing. But uh, the way uh, uh, I think Babar has come back and, and, and Babar and, and especially Abdullah Shafiq also, uh, uh, I think both of them laid the foundation. And uh, I mean, th th enough has been said about, uh, he, he's the king now, officially the king now, uh, King Babar. Uh, the records, uh, the stats are there to you know, uh, justify what, what Babar has uh, brought mm -hmm. to this team. And we've been saying that uh, he's, a, he's a great leader, he's a great batsman, but he was due for runs uh, two years, uh, for the last two years he didn't have a century. But what, a, what, a, uh, what an occasion to uh, come back to the form, not just back to the form, but scoring such an important... After two days you have left each and everything, you gave up and you came up with really ordinary stuff, but now the way they are playing, re remarkable, so and one thing that is, that is the skipping leader and that is the Babar Azam who led from, uh, from the front and he showed that this is the class and class is the permanent. So definitely, uh, and it's very interesting that you mentioned that obviously after the first innings we were all very harsh on Pakistan, yeah. uh, though us three included as well. Have Australia messed it up by letting Pakistan back into this game in the second innings? Is this something they have done that have enabled, obviously what seemed like they were heading towards victory, they were going to get a, a result. Obviously Babar Azam, Shafiq, Rizwan mm -hmm. have thrown a spanner in the works. But surely Australia have to look at themselves and go, uh, go like we have really, really messed up a chance to get a, a victory over here because it did seem like that was the inevitable result. No, I think I'm, I'm, I'll go with, uh, you know, I think Australians have done what they could have done. Uh, uh, see, this, this uh, test pitch was all there for the betters to take the advantage. Applying themselves uh, because you've seen that on the first, second day, uh, you, you never expected Starch to come up with the backs, you know, with the reverse swing and all that. 
So, uh, and the ball was spinning right on the first and the second day. So I think um, it, it was uh, basically sloppy uh, batting by, uh, the application was not there. And then once you have seen, as, as K. Asif also earlier mentioned, that once you, once you apply yourself and you commit to the process, uh, test cricket is, is not T20 or one, you know, one day international. You've got to apply, apply for each and every over, baller to baller, session to session. And I think uh, what Babar and, and Abdullah Shafiq has shown, um, uh, surely th there will be question marks with regards to whether Imam ul Haq or Azhar Ali will be playing the third test match or not. Uh, you know, there, there may be a change coming in uh, because we have a lefty in the, in the, in the offing, Kiyasif. And I think, uh, uh, with the, uh, and, and, and Shan Masood is also there. So, um, yeah, Imam ul Haq, really disappointing. Uh, Azhar Ali, really disappointing. Fawad Alam, a big disappointment. But uh, these three guys, uh, Babar Azam, uh, Mohammad Rizwan and Abdullah Shafiq, they have shown that uh, this, this, this side still has quality. And this, you know, the senior heads, uh, Babar and, and Rizwan, they have combined. And, and Abdullah Shafiq has, I mean, he's being praised all over the world, especially by the Australians, the way that he's playing. And uh, so he's one for the future. He, is, is a, he has to stay injury free. And, and you'll see the best of Abdullah Shafiq uh, in, in the coming series in this calendar year also. Well, we, we all hope so. Could, could I make a comment if you yes, allow me? Yes, I, I slightly agree and slightly disagree <laughs> with Imran Sahib. Um, you know, he's right that uh, the way uh, dis uh, disappointment is there from Azareli especially. Imam ul uh, he had a really good test match. Of, uh, first, if you talk about the first test, got consecutive innings in two in uh, consecutive centuries in two innings. Uh, yes, in second test match, disappointment is there from Imam ul uh, But for Wad Alam, give him some chance, you know, that why? Because he's been uh, performing so many times and performing anywhere. If you talk about New Zealand, you talk about England, you talk about West Indies, he, he was our uh, best performer there. And uh, if you talk about the, the rest of the players like Azhar Ali, the way he's talking, yes, this is the time now thing. And we talked about it earlier as well. And uh, lots of discussion is going on that this is his might be his, his last series because uh, you know that his performance is underrated nowadays and uh, in, in an intense situation if you're not performing then you won't be a great player intense situation as Imran mentioned that the three players they performed really well Abdullah Shafiq, Babar Azam and Rizwan and you know that we always depend on Rizwan and Babar because uh, they're the players when we say that their performance is consistently look if you talk about that uh, uh, Babar Azam his average is 45 but, against but, Australia but, but, but Kiyasi, and if, uh, I, if I, may, if I uh, join in well, one last thing then then you definitely and the last thing is that uh, Pakistan played this test match that uh, they came back early on in the first innings everyone was talking now we lost but your question was that what wrong with what went wrong with the Australia and yes I'm with you that uh, they went uh, on the aggressive position, uh, sorry, on the defensive position. They said that if we'll be chasing, let's suppose if Pakistan played well and we didn't go the follow on and then the Pakistan played well, how we could be chasing on the fifth day because they were scared with this spinning track. So I think they should have gone for the follow on and because uh, uh, Pakistan was in real trouble in pressure. So they, 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 they did uh, put more pressure on Pakistan, but they didn't. And that's why Pakistan is but in Imran good position. Can right, for, yeah, next. Fawad Alam is a, is a home lad. Uh, you know, Karachi is his home ground. The way um, Khwaja has played, you know, he, he has shown, it looks like that Khwaja has been playing in Karachi <laughs> all his life. But Fawad Alam, uh, because the record that he boasts in Karachi is tremendous. And, and uh, he's, he's, he's got one of the highest centuries all across um, in, in Pakistan cricket because he's been playing domestic cricket over there for all his life. So I think Fawad Alam, and Fawad Alam was required in this test match because in the last test match also he was not there. Um, he, he didn't get the chance to really show his class. Uh, so th this test match, uh, yeah, we got lucky that Babar Azam played such an innings. But otherwise, uh, you know, uh, three of your main uh, top five batsmen not performing and you are still defending uh, a score uh, and a fourth innings uh, more than 500. So, so outclass performance by, uh, you know, Babar Azam again and, and, and the uh, two, two batters. Um, coming back to Australia, uh, Seville, I think um, the pitch has not offered much. If you see in the first innings, uh, we thought that Swepson, this is going to be a dream debut. He took the wicket of Babar Azam. But in the second, uh, second innings, they have, they have both of them, now they've got few wickets. But earlier uh, when Babar was playing along with Rizwan, both, had, both of them had combined for more than 120 overs and, and for a single wicket. And, and Stark, who, Stark was there on the first day, there was a, the ball was reverse swinging and all that. But I think, I think again, uh, as, as uh, not, I mean, enough has been said about Babar Azam and, and Abdullah Shafiq and Rizwan. 
So I think hats off to the, th the way they, the three have handled this Australian bowling. 500 in the fourth innings is, is hell of a score to chase. So I think, um, um, again, um, if, if the series is drawn, I think we are all set for Lahore. And uh, I, I'm not hopeful that you know, it's going to be a, there, there's going to be because the way the pitches are being there now, you know, and the, and the weather conditions. So I think it could be could be a drawn series otherwise. So this is a point I want to actually address because obviously right now watching the game, everybody's focusing on the batting, and that's understandable because we're seeing our team bat. But in the first innings, we saw mm -hmm. the first Pakistani bat uh, innings when we were batting, we saw the Australian bowlers really take us to task and outclass us completely. So, yes, in the second innings, we've done better, but what can be done about the Pakistan bowling attack? Because we haven't really given much danger to Australia in either innings with our bowling attack. What can, uh, Asif, are there any changes we can make? Are there any players we can bring in? Or are they, like you see right now in the last few overs, Australia is fielding very aggressively. Is this something we need to do better? Because, fine, our batsmen can rescue us and they're performing well sometimes and not, but it seems like our bowling isn't performing at all. So, what is the solution there for our fielding and bowling? Uh, the one thing is that uh, in Rahul Pindi test, everyone was shocked because uh, even ICC said that this, this was an underrated pitch. So uh, we were expecting something uh, better in Karachi, but the same thing happened, you know, that uh, they, they made a really slow pitch and uh, everyone was talking about even uh, the Australian fast bowlers, they struggled. Uh, why they have taken w uh, so many wickets in the first innings and uh, in the second innings, you know, Nathan Lyon is the top wicket taker is a spinner. The, the first innings for the Australia, if you see their line and length, they just, they've targeted just stumps. They've targeted that uh, they came up, this is what we call that is uh, wicket to wicket bowling. And Pakistan was missing there, your question, concerning your question. Pakistan was just going, was not thinking Pakistani bowlers. They were not thinking out of the box and they're just uh, targeting fourth or fifth stump outside the off stem and trying to, to chase the Australian batters and give them some edges. But it did not happen. And what happened actually, the Australian baller, ballers, they came up with the Yorkers, quick Yorkers. An aggressive yes, strategy. Aggressive strategy, this is what, and they known uh, for this uh, aggression, you know. And uh, if you talk about that, what happened with the Fawad Alam uh, in the first innings, what happened with the Fahim Ashraf, they went actually across the line. And to be very honest, the Mijil Stark, he came up, what is the fastest delivery, you know, I've seen um, against the Fawad Alam. It was a really quick delivery and it was a slight mistake from the great batter Fawad Alam. He's a great batter. And if you talk about Fahim Ashraf, you know, once again, he went for the T20 stuff and crossed the line. You should have understand that this is test cricket. It should have bat, uh, gone with the straighter bat. So this is the, the problem with the Pakistani bowlers that... I think out of the box, plenty of experience there. Though Shaheen is young, but you know, Hassan Ali is a good performer. We need some, you know, a little bit change track in Lahore. We don't want to see this uh, dead track as we have watched in Rahul Bini in Karachi. Uh, I want to see a little grass there. So let's, fast bowlers coming up. Please do not, uh, please do not care about uh, Mitchell Stark and uh, Pat Cummings and J Josh Hazelwood. Gives some chance to your fast bowlers. Well, Shaheen is there, Hassan is there, Fahim is there. So I think that uh, the the problem is pitches uh, with the pitch in uh, concerning Pakistani fast bowlers. Rest. I think that this match is really remarkable for Pakistan because because we have saved it from nail biting beginning. Well, again on that point, Imran, uh, I'll come to you. Our, bat, our, our batting lineup is safe as Babar Azam, Shafiq, Rizwan. We've mentioned them now. We're in the last three overs now. We might get a draw here. It's seeming likely that that is possible. Uh, and again, I think Australia has let this slip by, as Azam mentioned, not giving us a follow on and so on. But in the next game, pitches be however they may be. Does our bowling attack need to be more aggressive? Or does our lineup need to change? Or do you, what do you think is the strategy going into that? If, say, the pitches are the same, say we're getting another dead track, what can Pakistan do to get a result on those pitches? Or do you think they're not even going to try and they're going for draws? This is one of the great questions I've heard, you know, while covering cricket. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, you know, things that you've asked. I'll, I'll go one by one. First of all, quickly, um, to K. Asif, uh, Azhar Ali is going to be here for long. Uh, he's going to play another 10 years. Uh, you know, whatever. But, I but, don't know. This, yeah. but this anyway, is your prediction. Yeah, or let, you let's, let's, let's move on. There are a couple let's of things. Let's hope it's to, 10 years. Yeah, We're yeah, hoping but, it's 10 years. So, yeah, he, he has to uh, really improve. Uh, and I think we have Mohammad Yusuf there. And he, he has got a great record uh, on just be, on, on the performance of one test. We cannot say he, he had a big 100 last, last test. Uh, moving on to uh, the bowling side, you know, that why Pakistani bowling was not there, uh, you know, uh, your earlier two questions. 
first of all uh, we are coming uh, from after playing a t20 domestic cricket mm -hmm. league um, Shaheen Afridi uh, versus uh, Mitchell Stark. Um, there have been comparisons about, you know, both have similar actions, uh, same height almost. Uh, but why Stark was successful in the first innings and Shaheen has not been throughout this test series so far because he's still bowling, uh, you know, not the line which, which is required in the test cricket. You know, you've got to, you've got to go along with it because, of course, there's a superb batting line of that Australia boast right now. Uh, uh, not one of the best, it is the best right now. Uh, but again, uh, Shaheen Afridi being the number one bowler in, in, uh, in one day international in T20, a top bowler, he should have changed his line and length. Uh, I think, I think Rauf should be brought in. Uh, secondly, Hassan Ali and Fahim Ashraf, who played these two test matches, they were coming back after an injury. So overall, if you see that uh, this is the major difference that why Australian bowlers were and are more prepared to, to ball the, uh, to get the other batsmen out, uh, the opposition batsmen out, which they have done so. Uh, in the first innings of this uh, test match. So I think in Lahore, if you, if you go for the, I'm sure, uh, they'll go for a little more grass on the, on, the, on the pitch because the whole cricket wants now, you know, a seeded decider after a lot of stuff has been talked about the two pitches. So I think if, if, um, if there's a green, um, there's, there's, it's, it's a green pitch, uh, you want uh, the local lad, uh, Harish Rauf, to come in in place of uh, Hassan Ali. And I think uh, Sajid, your off spinner, as expected, yeah, he should have balled really well, uh, especially in Karachi, because uh, normally they get a lot of people out there. So I think uh, we, we have another leg spinner in our fold. So uh, yes, uh, like you like you asked, and I think you were rightly mentioning, I think there would be a couple of changes in uh, in Pakistan team. Coming into uh, Lahore, we you're saying a little bit of grass. Say we provide that, and Australia goes and bats first, and they hit another for another 500 odd runs. Australia is not a team that makes the same mistake twice. They will try limiting us in the first innings if they bat first, sending us to a follow-on and just demolishing us. That is going to, and if you give them a pitch where their bowlers have a bit more grass, I think it works in their favor a little bit more. I think it'll actually help them if, there's a more, if they can bowl a bit more aggressively because they're already bowling aggressively. So if the pitch complements them, sure. so is Pakistan's best strategy, this might sound like a very defeatist attitude, but is Pakistan's best strategy to make the pitch dead and just play for a draw because I don't see us having the capacity over two innings to beat Australia. I think this is also just because they made a bad decision and let us uh, bat our second innings. Uh, sorry, they uh, didn't let us follow on. Um, either we have to, dis uh, to decide that either we are improving our cricket mm -hmm. or we just want a draw. If mm -hmm. you want to, to see your batters, your, all the cricketers, your ballers, if uh, they, they want, you want them to improve, Give them some, you know, open opportunities and give them some tough chances and give them some tough spaces. It does not mean that the Australia got a really good uh, fast bowling track and that's why we are scared and we're not made, making green tracks. Uh, um, Sabil, to be very honest, that uh, uh, the Ramiz Raja, lots of respect for him, but honestly, he has decided to bring new pitches, drop in pitches, idea, he brought that. But after watching this, practically that in, against Australia, he was on the defensive position. Why? I don't know. Because if you are, uh, uh, if you're thinking that you're going to lose, uh, you, you, you don't going to win. Because uh, one thing in your mind that we are there for, for the, to, to defend, we are there to draw the series. What you are giving to your young, youngsters, what idea, what vision you are giving to your youngsters. My vision is that the if Pakistan could beat Australia in test series, even on the green track, so that would be the best idea. Come up with the aggressive approach. Tell them that you would have to win over these conditions, over this, look, uh, this, is, this is Pakistan cricket. And Pakistan cricket is, the, and we are playing after 24 years in Pakistan against Australia. What will message go around the world that the, the series have drawn? What will be this? The, the comment on the point he mentioned and also, uh, I want to ask this question specifically from you because I think it was this time last week we were all sitting here discussing and you had very you were very adamant that Pakistan has the ability to beat Australia. Do you? Th I still think you believe that that we do have the ability to beat them with a full squad in the third test. But do you think the management does not agree with you because they seem to be setting up matches and pitches to get draws? It does seem that way. So do you think that's the case? And also on Asifai's point. I think pitch or no pitch, enough enough has been talked, uh, we have talked about the pitch. I'm very clear, cricket, Sabil uh, and K. Asif. Pakistan on zero. Well, there you have it. As we mentioned, we have announced that it has been uh, a draw. 
the Karachi test has ended in a draw, as you see on your screens just there. We have uh, obviously had a comeback from Pakistan in the second innings. This was far more exciting. If you're a viewer at home and you've been following uh, not just this test match, but the previous one, this is what Pakistan cricket needed. A far more exciting, uh, an exciting test match. One where there, even if there was a draw and we didn't get a win for either side, it was compelling. It was actually exciting. It seemed like there were two teams competing. And this is what Pakistani cricket really needed. We're all hoping for a far, uh, obviously for a result and a result in our favour in the third test match in Lahore. And Imran Bhai and Asif Bhai and all of us here, we've discussed ad nauseum, not just this match, but what we're expecting from there, be it pitches, be it batting or bowling orders and what to expect in that match. But we can all take solace in this, if you are a fan of Pakistani cricket, that you have people in this team who are fighters, who will fight to the end. And this draw right here is testament to their ability, testament of the Pakistani spirit, where we do come back and we will not just lay down and let a team that's supposedly so much better than us uh, just wipe us, uh, wipe the floor with us and just destroy us. We have fought back in a far, far more comprehensive second innings. And that is all for the second test. It has ended in a draw. And Australians will feel that that is a bit like a loss considering how this started off. But um, Asifai, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this segment, for sticking with us through this very, very exciting end to a test match. We're just going to head to a short break. When we come back, we will have more action in store for you. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining us, viewers. I'm sure your heart is still racing from the end of that test match, uh, which is very rare to see in test cricket. But thank you for sticking with us. We will now be moving on to our final segment of the day. We will be discussing the NFL and Tom Brady's return. We have a package on that. Let's go take a look. Four months after the former Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback announced his retirement from professional football, Tom Brady, revered by many as the NFL's greatest ever quarterback, reversed his decision to retire, saying that he couldn't bear to be a spectator. Brady is returning to the Bucs for his 23rd NFL season. In announcing his return, the quarterback said he's got some unfinished business. His time as a retired NFL player barely lasted 40 days. The 44-year-old will return to the Bucs as the oldest active NFL player. Brady officially announced his retirement on 1st February following a stunning 22 NFL seasons and 7 Super Bowl titles, saying he wasn't going to make the competitive commitment to football anymore. Brady's quick reversal puts the Buccaneers in a much better position as when the teams begin talking to and signing free agents, they will not have to search for a new starting quarterback. Two runs and seven passes to take the lead. Well, there you have it. Tom Brady is returning to the NFL. Obviously, a champion we're all happy to see. When we made a retirement package on him, we were all sad to go. And uh, funnily enough, somebody spent $500,000 or so on buying his last NFL ball, which he threw, which clearly now is not his last. Uh, Imran, I want to come to you on this. You were here with us discussing Tom Brady when we discussed his retirement. What do you make of this return? Are you excited to see him back? And what do you think this means for the NFL? To have him back. I think Glazers are not getting it right uh, at Ma and at Man United, <laughs> but uh, his his uh, Brady's visit to uh, and and they have a stake in Buccaneers anyway. So I think they have convinced him to come back, and uh, he was visiting London and uh, meeting Ronaldo and everyone. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, uh, of course, I mean there are a lot of great great champions, uh, Sabil, who have uh, uh, after the announcement they made a comeback. Uh, Michael Phelps is one, uh, uh, Michael Jordan is another one in basketball. So they, they, the, the champions, they always come back. Uh, they always have some unfinished business to, uh, you know, to, be, to, to, play, to play, play again. So welcome back, uh, Tom Brady. Um, there, there's nothing much to say, but, uh, you know, welcoming a legend like Brady back, I think he's going to inspire more people. Um, I think the unfinished business he's talking about, I think there's a new roster. Uh, Buccaneers are going to add more players, uh, you know. Um, the team is going to go through a, a rebuilding process through Brady and I think um, he's, he's going to play and I think going forward he'll be involved. Uh, we thought that he'll be you know, picking up uh, golf as, as, as the new <laughs> uh, you know, uh, sports but I think he's, he's, he's there uh, uh, with the game which has given him so much um, in, in his life. So, so welcome back uh, Tom Brady. Okay, well, um, we've also been joined in studios by a long-time uh, sports expert and analyst who comes on this show. We have Ali Mehdi with us. And Ali, I want to jump straight into it because sure. we are short on time. 
the Buccaneers were going to go through a rebuild. They were losing uh, their cornerback and running back. They were losing Carlton Davis and Fournette. They were going to lose them. They're probably reconsidering leaving now uh, because Brady has come back. They haven't signed new contracts anywhere else. So now that Brady's coming back, how do you think the restructuring works? Obviously, Aaron Rodgers signing a new contract at the at the Green Bay at Green Bay. So it does seem like we're in for another very exciting season of NFL. Extremely exciting season. You're talking about Aaron Legends, another uh, legend for uh, Green Bay Packers, who's actually decided to extend his contract. But the two players you mentioned, now that a legend like Tom Brady is coming back, it's going to inspire this team. Look, this team, uh, this uh, uh, Tom. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they came so close, they lost to eventual champions, LA Rams, 30-27, uh, and you know, you could see towards the end, he wasn't too sure, Tom Brady, whether he wanted to go and then come back, and then, you know, he took two months out to reflect how he is without the game, and then after his visit to Manchester, decided that, you know, this, he probably wants to come back, he's extremely lean right now, he's very fit, he's very hungry, and he really wants that eighth, um, uh, eighth title of his, and, and he's already won five MVPs, so, you know, he really wants to add to that. Well, Ali Mehdi, Imran Jajua, thank you both so much for taking part in the show. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking a look. Uh, we will be taking a look at this segment. What we discussed, we discussed obviously Tom Brady returning to the uh, NFL. It has been only 40 odd days since he's left, and we know he has more in him. You can never ever count a player of his caliber out. And he was in, he was on incredible form as well when he retired. So he clearly has a lot left to give. I think the NFL uh, is we were going to be a rebuild for a lot of teams, but now. Uh, this return has thrown a spanner in the works. Obviously, they are now one of the odds-on favorites, the Buccaneers, uh, to win their conference. So, very exciting times for the NFL ahead. Always great to see a legend return. And I don't think anybody should think Tom Brady is done. He still has a lot left to give, be it one more season. He's always got an MVP season in him. But with that, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Sports Extra. I've been your host, Sabeel Hazard. From me, the entire team, PTV World and PTV in general, thank you very much for tuning in and see you all tomorrow.